Hey everybody, it's AJ from Knife Bible, and this video I'll be covering traditional hatchets. Stay sharp, stay tuned. A hatchet is a great outdoor tool. And in an emergency scenario, it can easily transition into a self-defense weapon. A hatchet is smaller in size and lighter in weight than an axe. It can easily accomplish almost everything an axe can. And it's highlight almost. Because a hatchet is smaller in size, it's a bit more versatile than an axe. That's just my opinion though, because if you know how to wield an axe properly, you could pretty much do anything with it. You can easily pack a hatchet in your bug out bag or outdoor kit. An average hatchet will weigh anywhere from one to three pounds, depending on the overall design and weight of the head. Size and weight are not the only things to consider as far as the advantages of carrying a hatchet. You can chop down small trees to set up a shelter. You can process wood for fire and you can make traps to catch small game. You can also use the back portion of the head as a hammer. However, be careful doing so because um, depending on what you're hammering over time, you can loosen the head from the haft and it's just going to fall off. Hatchets are great woodworking tools. A couple years ago, I made a kuksa using the Grants Forest Brook Wildlife Hatchet. And for, for those of you who don't know, a kuksa is uh, a traditional Scandinavian or Nordic uh, wooden cup. And uh, they also make these in Eastern Europe. These cups are very popular among the bushcraft community. Anyways, hatchets have been used for thousands of years as a multi-purpose tool. Hand axes were first made anywhere from 1.5 to 1.8 million years ago. And the reason it's so difficult to, to assign a specific date because it's still up for debate among archeologists, whether it was 1.5 or 1.8 million years. It is a very complex process when you're trying to assign uh, a date uh, as to when something was invented when it was you know, millions of years ago. So these hand axes were essentially flint napped stone with a teardrop shape at the top and flattened cheeks on the sides that would taper as you get to the cutting edge. Hafted axes, okay, which are kind of like the ones you see here. These are hatchets, but hafted axes date back about 6,000 BC. There is a large selection of very good hatchets currently available. There is a hatchet for every budget. An Estwing Sportsman Camp Hatchet will run you about 40 bucks. Uh, a Moranev Hatchet will run you about 40 bucks as well, depending on where you buy it. Fisker's X7 would be about 30 bucks roughly. Husqvarna would be about 60 to 70 bucks, depending on where you buy it. For this video, however, we're gonna focus on a mid to high priced uh, hatchets. So the first one on the list is the Holtzbrook Almeik. It is a tradition traditional style, a Swedish style hatchet that weighs about 1.75 pounds overall. The head weighs about a pound and it's made out of Swedish axe steel. The, the handle measures about 16 inches in length and it's made out of hickory, um, made in Sweden obviously. The Helkel Verk, um, this one, the Pathfinder, is a classic German style design with a beautifully polished head. It weighs about two pounds overall. Uh, the head weighs about a pound and a half and it's made out of C50 high carbon steel hardened to about 53 to 56 HRC and it has an overall length of 15 inches. The next one on the list, ah, price, sorry, forgot to mention. The Holtzbrook Almike will be about $150. The Helco Verk will be about $139 depending on where you purchase it. And the next one on the list is the Adler Rhineland Hatchet. Uh, it has a really nice German Rhineland pattern head. Um, and um, as far as that cutting edge, it's gonna have the longest cutting edge out of all the hatchets that are here. Uh, the Rhineland is gonna run you about $80, which is the most affordable out of all five that are up here. 
uh, it weighs about 1.35 pounds that the axe head that is it's made out of c60 high carbon steel and it's hardened to about 47 to 55 hrc roughly the total weight though is 1.9 pounds overall so it is going to be uh more on the heavier side as you know compared to all the other ones and uh it measures um overall about 14 inches in length it has a hickory handle uh i love the design by the way it is really really nice i love this german rhineland design it's fantastic. The next on the list is the uh, Council Velvet Cut Hudson Bay Belt Hatchet. It weighs about 1.25 pounds overall, and the head is made out of 5160 steel. The overall length of the handle is about 14 inches, made of hickory, and it's made in the USA. It runs you about $130, roughly, depending on where you buy it. The next one on the list is the Grantsford's Brook Wildlife Hatchet. The overall weight is 1.35 pounds. The head weighs about a pound. Uh, the length is about 13.77 inches roughly. Um, and it has a really nice hickory handle. Um, I have to say I love the head geometry of this hatchet. It is amazing. Uh, and as far as performance goes, they are all fantastic performers. Uh, the only major difference between these is going to be the weight and the... Uh, head design, right? Some are going to have more of that Swedish style uh, or it's going to have more of that um, uh, classic uh, uh, German uh, traditional style or more of that uh, German Rhineland style. But all in all, they're, they're all really good performers. As far as weight, the Helco Verk is going to be um, on the heavier side, just like the Adler Rhineland. These two are going to be the heaviest hatchets out of the bunch. The lightest two are going to be the Grandsfors Brook and the Council Velvet Cut um, Belt Hatchet. These two are going to be the lightest. Even though they're the lightest, they are fantastic performers. Uh, obviously, the heavier ones are going to be better at splitting wood. Uh, these are just going to be, they're, they're also going to split wood pretty well, uh, but these two, the heavier ones, are going to be able to split larger chunks without a problem whatsoever. So as far as the handles go, the grain orientation on all of them is really, really good. About, yeah, I'd say 90 degree grain orientation, which is what you're looking for. So essentially, you're going to want to look at this grain orientation. This one is not quite at that 90 degree, but it's still very good. It's, it's acceptable. It's acceptable. So when you're looking for that 90 degree, uh, I would probably say the velvet cut is one of the closer to that 90 degree and I don't know if you're going to be able to see it there but uh, you can see the grain orientation 90 degrees that's what you want to look for in your hatchet or your axe because um, having good 90 degree grain orientation means that it's less susceptible to uh, splitting up on you when you're chopping wood and you miss you happen to hit the handle it you run uh, less of a risk of the, the handle uh, splitting or breaking on you if it has really good 90 degree orientation. Uh, another thing, um, they're all really smooth handles. Uh, for the most part, they all have a really nice swell uh, at the bottom, which is really good when you're chopping. Uh, less chance of it slipping out of your hands. Uh, they're all really smooth. And I have to say that I know some people uh, kind of complained a little bit about the Helco Verk being um, a little bit uh, wider, but in reality, it's, it's very similar to all the other ones. Uh, and uh, at least for me, I wear large size gloves and I have to say that the Helco Verk was fantastic. It performed very well. I had no issues with the handle thickness on any of these. But again, I do wear large size gloves. So it just depends on, on you know, your, your hands and what you feel comfortable with. Let me show you some B-roll so you can see how some of these tools performed outdoors at chopping and splitting wood.
a hatchet is a fantastic outdoor multi-purpose tool. Now, if it is a little bit too heavy, then I would definitely consider a tomahawk. A tomahawk can weigh almost half the amount of a hatchet. It's also a very good option and has very similar capability as well. Some of the things I don't cover in this video are the smaller style hatchets. I also don't cover tomahawks or the non-traditional uh, uh, camp axes or small hatchets like the SE uh, Gibson axe or the Topps Grandpa axe. I also don't cover any of the Winkler hatchets or tomahawks or anything like that in this video. However, uh, I will be covering these non-traditional axes as well as the, the traditional tomahawks and smaller hatchets in a separate video. So this is the Fault Neven DC4 sharpener. And this is how I usually sharpen these hatchets. Okay, I do circular motions. I make sure that the edge is touching evenly. Okay, you see no gaps between the sharpening stone. Okay, circular motions like this. on both ends. On both ends. Circular motions until... And then I flip it over and I do the same thing on the other side. Then you strop with the Bark River Black Compound. You want to apply either a drop of oil or maybe some wicked wax or that uh, knife bomb that I taught you how to make in one of the previous videos. And you just apply very little of it on both sides, just like that. You wanna make sure that you protect your tools so that they don't rust on you. All right, everybody, I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Instagram. Have a fantastic day, stay sharp, stay tuned. Thank you.